Welcome back to The Grind. In this video, we are going to take a look at Sorthrim, which we have been granted as a member of the Creators Faction to test out and create some content to help players better decide what they want to do this season. So you can see I had just the basic runes and glyphs from the line. I have some pretty decent mythic earth gear and then a rider that has dragon attack and dragon HP and some rage. So all of those stats are going towards the dragon. And I actually quite enjoy flying Sorathrim. Um, I find him quite fun and actually a pretty solid dragon, even with defenders. But there are some things we're going to take a look at that do limit his potential with defenders. Now mine is Eldritch tier. So these 112 towers are a bit above tier. It's a 16 billion defense base. I'm not sure if they have finished out the whole base boost branch yet this season. One thing I don't like about this dragon is all of the spells have very similar icons, so it's kind of hard to learn at the start. But that blue one is that teleport spell that basically cloaks and transports him really quickly up front, and you cannot use any spells or breath attack during that brief pause. Uh, and it has a 12 second cooldown, so it's quite long, but it can be used to speed up your run or as a safety measure. So we come in and we use that second from the bottom spell, which does damage every second and basically absorbs all damage and super shots. Then you can cast it again, but it is pretty short. So you use the white spell above it as a shield, which you can see I cast right before the Howie hit me, and it takes a lot of damage and basically you take no damage from it. Then I get hit by an ice flak and the howitzer is about to hit me again. So I do take damage from that. And when it fires again, I use the blue spell to cloak and teleport ahead so I don't get killed. And then when I got there, I used the free spell to deal more damage. And then the damage amp spell, the bottom white spell increases breath damage that you deal. So this next base we're going to take a look at is 25 billion defense. And um, what I like about Sorthrim is the spells really work together. You use that first spell to avoid taking super shot damage, um, deals a little bit of damage out. Then you freeze towers right after, which will stop projectiles. Then you can activate that shield, so you're taking very little damage. And then it explodes and deals a bunch of damage. Then you can use that protective spell again, the freeze again. But then there's a short cooldown at this point right here where you can't yet use that shield again. But the cloak, if you've taken away all blue mages can save you if you're about to get hit. Now this does make it harder to destroy all the towers because you teleport ahead and lose time to attack them. So you can see there was a couple towers there that I did not quite destroy, but this base was above my tier. Another thing I enjoy about this dragon is you can cycle the spells quite often, especially that middle white one that does the area damage as well as avoiding super shots and then goes into the freeze because there's only a short cooldown and each cast costs one rage but restores one rage so as long as you have one rage it's basically free and the freeze is very nice to stop long range projectiles if you're close enough to the tower to freeze it plus you have that shield that protects you and then explodes and deals more damage so it is quite a fun dragon to use but you do spend a lot of time casting spells so this is an atlas run next that is against i think they're level 112 towers this run is undefended and is right near the beginning of me learning to fly sword thrym and with this you can see i can hit those two towers there pretty easily so there's some um, layouts about atlas that are a bit easier but since it is different you do have to be prepared now look at all the super shots that were going off a little bit unlucky there but we did manage to get through it i do think that i just left a tiny bit of health on one of the towers at the start there because i had to start focusing on the back towers but again the uh, the tower level is above what you would expect for eldritch to be able to handle but again there is no defender in this run so then i asked them to defend me in just the main game and uh, the defense power of this base is just over 22 billion and i think sora my dragon in eldritch tier is about 10 billion attack power and so you can see i use that blue spell to sort of speed up on the parts that are not quite necessary but it does have a long cooldown so you have to be careful when you use it especially if you might want to use it in a defensive way when you're on the attack island so coming around the corner again i use that um spell to avoid super shots right away and then i try to take out the uh, ice flak you can see i don't deal that much damage until i get that freeze off and then have the damage amp running but you can see you can take a lot of hits with sora because you have that one spell that you just completely don't take any damage or super shots and then you have one that puts up a massive shield that protects you from a lot of damage until it explodes so we did pretty good on this run but we did leave a couple towers partially up there um, with the hammer spam and having to focus on other towers but i'd say not bad for hitting above tier with a defender now this base has max towers but they're split onto island three and island 
two. And the defense power is only 11 billion, so probably don't have the base boost yet. But this is an example of why I recommend the Long Island when you're at a point that it makes more sense. Because most dragons are very capable of dealing with just five towers at a time. You can see how easily we cleared all those towers with very little health lost, and we only ended up with less than one rage uh, below going into this next island where we can cycle all the spells again avoiding the damage from all the super shots the howitzer and burning through those towers pretty quick and then once you get the damage bonus from the freeze onto those farms and mills especially with the breath damage bonus they go down quite quickly so um, an example of how this dragon can work very well on short bases and also why it's important to move to a long island at some point now we are going to have a clip at the end of a long island setup with max level towers and just over 20 billion defense it's not defended um but we will be showing that at the end and hopefully in another video i can get some defended footage once i get some initial gameplay with all the dragons um but i i've really been enjoying sorathrim and i think it's a very uh powerful dragon maybe struggles a bit more at max tier with multiple defenders but a very fun dragon and quite simple dragon to fly it does require some focus and attention to using the spells and rotating them at the right time Times, but it's not that complicated and there's not a lot of precision and skill um, required as most hunters do especially with this hunter and you can see I did get rage drained but I did have one rage left so I was able to use that cycling spell to continue to reduce damage that I was taking and then I used the one rage breath damage spell to help finish clearing it off and then again you can see the farms and mills go down quite easily once you get the damage bonus spells off especially in combination with the breath damage so here's the clip with the Long Island setup of the 117 level towers with uh, over 20 billion defense and there is no defender here but look at the farms and mills here how difficult it is for them to go down without any of the spells going and then once we get the uh, free spell off so they take more damage and then use the breath damage bonus spell they do go down pretty quick um, but these are pretty high level towers with lots of health and so that's just a highlight of you know how how tough these towers are when you're hitting above tier but we are still able to get through it now there aren't really many super shots going off um, you can see we froze that mage drain shot but we're not having to deal with ice, ice flags or shields so that does make this a little bit easier but you know having a dragon that can hit above tier undefended is is nice to have especially it's reassuring because then when you're hitting at tier with defenders usually you can manage uh, through it and take a couple of hits um, this dragon does struggle with shield towers and with the ice flax especially if you can manage the rage drain um, then you can get around it with the freeze but the ice flak is probably what's going to hurt the most because you're going to have to focus on the shield tower first and then you're going to want to focus on the ice flak while you're trying to ward off the mage drain super shots with the freeze but if you get hit by the ice flak it'll shut down all your defensive spells it'll deactivate them from functioning and prevent you from using a second one so during that period of disabled spells you'll be very very vulnerable to damage and that's where Sora is going to struggle the most so you'll have to be ready for that and if you can you know enter the island with the freeze and take out the ice flak first because you freeze the earth flak super shot then that is another way to approach it so I'm going to have to do a little bit more testing on that as far as what the best rotation is but so far I've been the most successful with starting with the spell that prevents you from taking any super shots because that allows you time to take out one or two towers um, and then you can freeze the ice flak after giving you a little bit extra time to work on taking that down and but so far i've been having a lot of fun with sora i think it's a very solid dragon and not a mo not the most simple warrior so it's still a little bit fun and interesting to use but you do have to hit a lot of spells pretty frequently um, so that is one of the downsides but I, I like that better a good dragon that does require some effort but isn't overly complicated and skill intensive like we'll see when I am able to get a video out on Zool. Um, but both are fun. So far, I think I... You know, I enjoyed Sora more because it was easier to get the hang of. And, you know, this might be a season where I just decide to say, hey, you know what, I'll take a little bit lower skill um, skill cap, even if it costs a little bit less, you know, potential in the long run. So I do think that this will be a good choice dragon. Uh, I think we're, we're up in a season where there's both really great mythics. And so I don't think you'll go wrong. It'll depend on the element of gear you have, the roster, uh, what you need to fit in your roster and what your preferences are. But 
both appear to be pretty solid options. So I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.